The challenge of being an athlete during the season is always real, no matter the level of play. But for some Muslim athletes, trying to play at their best while observing the holy month of Ramadan can prove to be even harder. I'm Yusuf Anaya for WKAR Current Sports, and I'm joined by Palestinian Muslim American Yusuf Obeid, a kicker on the Michigan State football team. So, like to give it a little preface, like I know you spent the majority of your life, if not all your life, living in Dearborn, which is home to the largest Arab community in America, 55%. Um, and a large part of that majority is Muslim like yourself. And could you kind of talk about what it's like spending Ramadan in a place like that compared to East Lansing, where the Muslim and Arab community is like just a fraction of what it is back home? Yeah. Um, back home, you feel like when it's time to break fast, it feels more, um, I don't know how to explain it. Uh, when it's time to break fast with your family and everybody's around you, uh, it's like a big thing, right? Like, okay, it's time to break fast, time to break fast. When, when you're in Lansing, there's no one around you and you're you're at home, you got to cook for yourself. Breaking fast is like, like man, well, like, it's so like, like, you're still dead about it. It's something like, it's not really happy, you know? Like, sure, I get to eat, but like, that's it. Like a lonely then, feeling almost, kind of, right? Yeah. And um, another thing about Ramadan, and uh, everybody else is doing it with you. Everybody, you look to your right, to your left, oh, you're fasting? Of course you're fasting. Here, no one's fasting. And when you're on your own, you're like, wow, that's a lot harder, you know? When everybody's eating and you're the only one not eating, it starts getting hard. That's probably one of the biggest differences I noticed. Yeah, and, and we talked about it a little bit before the recording started, but, like, there's probably not a lot of Division One football teams that have, like, at least a pocket, you know, full of Muslims on the team where you guys can kind of relate with each other and, and you know, kind of go through the experience with each other. Can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, um, including me, I think there's six, maybe five Muslims on the team, and uh, it brought us a lot closer. We spent time together. We went through, like, we were waking up early. Every All of us were waking up at 4 in the morning, being at the sleep by 4.30 in the morning, and uh, shout-out to the strength cat, uh, the strength and conditioning, like, staff. They're the best of the best. This is the foundation of our team because the coaches didn't have to do that. You know, they're making a separate lift. They called it the Ramadan lift. They say every single day of practice, Ramadan lift is tomorrow. We'll all go in, go at 4, um, get there at, like, 4.30, start our lift. Uh, I don't know, we would finish, and then uh, we'd go downstairs, and all of us would eat together before Sahod. Uh, Sahod goes off, and um, the nutrition staff and uh, a lady at Kellogg, her name is Z, she would, uh, she would get the dish, she would get the plates ready for us. So we'd go downstairs, and it's ready out for us to eat, so we'd eat, and just so our body can maintain it, you know? But um, the conversations that we have with those players – at the table is uh, something you can't, you know, it's just like something you can't remake, you know, it just, it just happens. So that was the coolest thing. And we all bonded. We got to know each other better. And uh, alhamdulillah, you know. Yeah. And I'm sure like you guys, like Ken is coming from Philly, you know, Tariq's a Bosnian Muslim. Like you get so many different stories. Yeah. All the arguments we had was better football, Detroit or Philly, you know. Uh, yeah. There's a bunch of arguments, man. Yeah. Um, and yeah, even like Senegal. You know, so you, you learn about his culture. Like, when you actually sit down and spend time to eat with them, and you're eating with these kids 30 days in a row out of the week, out, out of the month. So, uh, those are the guys you see around. A lot closer by the end, huh? A lot closer. Now, if I see them, it's, before it was like, oh, what's up, dab you up? Now it's Salam, brother, you know, and you dab him up and a little hug. And then... Yeah, you, you kind of learn about something. Like, you learn about people and how they kind of approach things. You Like, Ramadan kind of shows you a lot about a person sometimes, you know what I mean? But my next question would be, it kind of ties into that, but, like, what kind of unique struggles does does Ramadan provide for you guys as student athletes? Um, obviously, the biggest struggle is during practice. You get to practice, and then you start stretching. All right, I don't think it's going to be too bad. And you put on a five-pound helmet, and you're like, okay, man, this thing, I'm, I feel a little lightheaded. And by the time the warm-up's over, but literally the stretch and the warm-up's over, you're like, wow, I'm like, I'm like my head's all over the place, you know? And... uh um, and you would think that it would mess you up. Like, oh, wow, it's messing you up. Crazy thing about it is that every single one of the kids, because, like, some kids didn't fast on practice days, but a lot of us did, you know? Um, but, like, the Ken Talley and Bai Job, they didn't fast, but it makes sense. They're DNs, you know, like, they're losing 10 pounds of practice. If they're, if they're fasting, you know, it's, at that point, it's not safe. It's a hell of a I know the biggest troopers, Antonio Gates, he's a receiver, and he fasted. 
and he was playing better during Ramadan. I didn't miss a field goal in Ramadan, which is crazy. It's like you figure like, oh, your body has less nutrients, blah blah blah. Like the, uh, my first camp I ever won was during Ramadan. I was fasting. Um, th- this practice, like, I never like. I was just I was consistent at money smooth, and the whole time my head was just out of it. But like, I feel like all the like looked out for me on the field, you know. No, I swear I'm not even kidding. I got like I got goosebumps when he said that. Like you, you, something happens to you when you are fasting. Like I mean, I'm not a. The doors I, open. Go ahead. The doors open up, like you yeah. said. Like and and you kind of just like that. I don't know if you saw Kyrie hit that game winner early. Like and like you know, like it's just like some holy stuff taking place. You know what I mean? You, you can't really explain it. I I see it as the truth coming out. Yeah, no, it, I like that. I like the way of putting that. That's a cool way to put it. Yeah. Um, and then you know, how was there kind of a learning curve or a learning process from the beginning of the month to the end with like coaches who have maybe never been or coaches and teammates okay. never been around somebody who's fasted before? Yeah. I so with the new coaching staff, you know, the new coaching staff is elite. I think it's best of the best for sure. Yeah. And uh, a good job connecting with the players. I can't. I don't know a single coach that when he's seen us fasting, did not get it. Like every single coach came up to us and asked, like, "Okay, uh, what's going on with Ramadan? Explain it to me." We got invited. This, one of the specialists. We got invited to Coach KB's house, assistant uh, head coach, running backs coach, um, and the special teams coordinator. He invited us to his house, and um, kids were eating. But uh, when I went there, even though I couldn't eat, his wife made me a plate to have him aside. I saw. I talked about uh, in front of him and uh, and his wife. Explain to them how it goes, you know, and uh, uh, so they learned a lot. Also, this is my first like my first time fasting at a Division One football school. Most like most other schools, they don't have it where like they have they can wake up. Even though it sounds like oh okay, you have to wake up at four. It's hard. Yeah, it was hard. I'm fighting demons to stay awake. But other kids at other schools are they're going to lift at eight, which in the long run during that month it's not good for them because they can't eat after you know. Um, thankfully, Michigan State looked out for us, and uh, weightlifting coach was blessed up, you know. Um, and uh, by the end, you just learn like, okay, these people, these coaches are here for you. They're actually here to get you better. Like, be, like you mean something to this program. You play a role in this program, and uh, that's probably the biggest thing I I would take out of it. Like, wow, like people are going out of my way for me. Like, no, that's pretty dope to see. Because like, I mean, like, there's so many people on a college football team. And like I feel like it's probably a hard job to care about each and every person, but like getting the buy-in is probably you get so much more buy-in when you do take that like due diligence and just care, you know. And it's simple. It's simple as that. You just kind of kind of care. And when you see the coaches care, you want to go to practice. Last season, it wasn't really big on like okay, kids want the kids didn't want to be to practice. Like there was nothing to be happy about being at practice, you know. Now. There's everything to be happy about. And when you see your coaches make the sacrifice for you off the field, you're going to make it the sacrifice for them on the field when it's time to work a little bit harder. During, like, uh, strength and conditioning, you're going to work a little harder to finish that last rep, uh, sprint through the line, whatever it is, just because you know, like, all right, this guy's doing it for me. Okay, uh, I'm a, he's, this guy's actually doing it for the team. Star of the team is the team. So I'm going to do it for the team, you know, just go, over the, like, go for the last rep because I know, I know they care, so I care. Yeah, no, 100%. And and lastly, my last question on, on this topic would be, what are you going to take away from this Ramadan? You know, you're a freshman. You got three more Ramadans, hopefully, here in East Lansing. What is it going to be like going forward, hopefully, for you? Uh, okay, so the first thing I'm going to take away is that don't ever take for granted what you have in the beginning because back home, Ramadan didn't seem like that big of a deal. I'm from Dearborn, so they have big festivals, you know, to like 50,000 people showing up to festivals, like, I don't know how many vendors are there, but there's a lot. When you're away from that, you realize how special it is and how connected the community is. And that's one thing that I realized, like, wow, man, I took that for granted. Like, spending time with my family, staying with my mom, like, going to the mosque, and then that's a big thing. Like, whenever I would go home, I would spend time with my family at the mosque, you know, just so I don't get that feeling. Um, but then speaking on the football side of it, now I'm not worried about, oh, like, oh, it's Ramadan, I have to, like, this is what's going to happen. Sure, I'm going to have to wake up early. That's the worst of it, you know? I know people are looking out for me, uh, and they're looking out because they respect my religious beliefs. So uh, I know I have three years left of this. I have three more Ramadans, and it's a blessed month. And I think the coaches are doing an amazing job at um, doing the best like that they can. And 
that they celebrate Eid with us, you know? Well, thanks so much for, for talking to me, Yusuf. It was, it was really a pleasure. You know, I, I can't wait to see what's in the future for both of us. It should be cool. But yeah, thank you so much for joining me, my friend. Yo, thank you. Thank you.